Well, hello everyone, and again, welcome to 2019, if this is your first video coming back of this year. And guess what? This is something that has absolutely zero, nothing to do with makeup, even though I have a ton of it on my face. <laughs> it has to do with affordable housing and um, places like this. We're going to go there. Um, so, anybody that's watching, this is going to be a little bit... There's a lot of information that I have here because, yeah, I've been sitting on this information for a little while now. I've been trying to find out the right time to bring this information because, again, I'm talking about affordable housing and that technically we have it. I know. I, I get it. I need to explain it all. So it's going to take a little bit. So grab yourself a cup of coffee or tea or whatever it is, stress ball if you want to. And um, we're gonna get into this. I'm gonna put my hair up first because it's warm. All right, I am back and there's a lot of information. There's gonna be links on the bottom where I found all of this information. And some of them was just from me talking to actual landlords who own properties. And here we go. Let's dive into everybody's most hated but favorite subject to talk about which is affordable housing because we really need some but like I said it's kind of there complicated I know I got notes so I hope you're not mad that I'm actually like really following the notes that are written down and like I just said I don't think there's a good time to ever say any of this some people are ready to hear some of this information because they want to make change some people aren't ready to hear it yet but I'm going to put it out now and when they're ready, they'll come along and they'll listen to it. And some people will just never be ready. Because this is, for some people, a huge slap in the face. Like, huge. And I'm going to get there. So, this is, you know, part two of what is the problem in this city. And today we're going to be addressing affordable housing. Let's get into that. The first thing I'm going to address is the statement I just said. That technically, we don't have a problem. Oh, let's dissect this. If you go out there and you look among all the studies and whatnot, which is what the government relies on, right? These are studies that have been accepted as being valid by peers and all that kind of whatnot. Moncton has the second least expensive rent in North America. Let that sink in. I know. If you go through all this, and the link for that will be below, okay? What this particular firm did when they did the studies is they looked at 154 cities across North America. And they compared one-bedroom apartments in the city's center, so downtown, core part. You know, and they just look at rent per month. They don't look at utilities, so they don't look at how much it costs to heat your apartment. It doesn't look at, you know, the fact that you need a phone of some sort, you know, an internet these days. Well, actually, actually, when it comes to internet, internet is now considered a human right for everyone to actually have it. I have another video linked, which I will try to link up here. I know there's a way to do it. I'll try to put it up there. It's a video that I've done before that explains how you, someone who doesn't have a lot of money, like me, you know, you're struggling to make ends meet, how you can get a basic internet connection for, I think it's like $10 a month or whatnot. So that video, I'll try to link it up here if I can figure out how. If not, it'll definitely be the first link that you see in my description box. Because yes, internet is now considered a human you know, necessity here in Canada, as for the government. One bedroom apartments, downtown, core, they didn't look at what it cost to heat the place. It didn't look at, you know, anything else, any other kind of amenities. Didn't look at groceries. Didn't take any of that into consideration. So that's why when you look on a grand scale, because, I mean, you're going to compare downtown Toronto apartments to downtown Moncton apartments. Yes, we have the second lowest, you know, I understand you're getting, you're, get, you're getting it, you know. You're all sitting there going, what the? Yeah. Exactly. And when the government, you know, needs to sprinkle out the money, they look at these studies, they go, Moncton don't need no help. They're the second lowest. There's more. There's more. There's more. And again, I'm waiting for my notes. The cost of living index for the city of Moncton is 
64.59. Now, what that actual number means in the grand scale of stuff would take way too long to explain because it took me like two hours to figure it out. So that number, for those of you who don't know what it means, just, 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 just don't. And for the people who do know what it means, like Mrs. Mayor, because I'm talking to you, because you do have something to play in this where you can help out, all right? Just not go there. You should know what this number means, Mrs. Mayor, but whatever. Um, <clears throat> if you don't know what it means, put it to the side. Just listen to the next part. The rental vacancy rate here in Moncton, and I'm reading, is on average 6%. <clears throat> now that's double the country average. Now, if we see the double the country average, most of us are going to have alarm bells going like, hey, there's a problem, there's a problem. This is where I have an issue with Mr. Standing on his soapbox from the Humanity Project saying that there's an issue. Yes, he's very correct that there's an issue. But the issue right now isn't even at its peak. Right now, so... This study, I believe it was from 2016, okay? So that's when he started on his soapbox. So in 2016, again, the average vacancy rate was 6%, which is double the country average. So yes, that sounds horrible. However, the peak of the vacancy problem here in the city of Moncton actually happened in 2011 when the vacancy rate was 15%. 15%, so the country average is 3%. In 2011, we were at 15%. Now, if you look at the numbers from 2016, five years later, we've gone down to 6%. That is a huge, huge improvement. Not to say that there isn't a problem now, okay? I agree completely with Charlie that there is a problem, that we do need more affordable housing. Hence why I'm making this video. To explain to the people who don't quite understand, people who are baffled, because there's people that are outside of this city that, that do see what he's putting out there as information. They, they're looking at these studies and they're going, there ain't no problem. I'm here to let those people know that there is a problem and where it lies. And I would very much hope that the mayor takes the time to watch these because I have met her in person. Um, and she may be able to do something about it because... Some of the things I'm talking about comes down to taxes. Oh, yes, those beautiful taxes. And what do taxes have to do with any of this? They have a lot to do. Because right now in Moncton, when you're going to look at an apartment building, it's either privately owned or it's owned by a huge corporation. Like, this is what I'm talking about, this stuff. Huge corporations, but we will get to them later because I actually have lists of them and why they're the problem or part of the problem. We'll get there in a minute. But the ones that are owned by huge corporations and whatnot, the taxes don't really affect them. They have millions in the bank. Where the tax in the city can come in and help things out, which I'm asking you to please make a change, Mrs. Mayor, or city council, to help the people. All right, let's just go with that. This is so strange and try to explain because when I'm going to say it out there, most of you are going to be like, what the heck? Like this, because you're just going to get it because it's that kind of like dumb slash common sense. So when it comes to rental properties here in Moncton, they have this thing called like the double tax. So if you are the owner of the building and you live in the building, you have, you know, property taxes as whatever. But if you happen to live in another dwelling, not on that property, as in you want to own more than one rental property because you're a good person and you want to rent to people that, you know, might not have, you know, the best of luck with life and we'll get to the rest later, okay? They're still good people. We'll get to that later. You want to do that. You want to own more than one property. Every single apartment or a rental property, it doesn't have to be a building, it could be a house or whatever. Everything that you rent in this city, so I guess this would be provincial taxes or maybe municipal taxes, I don't know. Either way, government, do something about it. You get taxed twice. If you do not live in that dwelling, the taxes on that property is double. But if you live there, it's not. So that 
prevents people that have the money, that have the cash flow to improve buildings to actually buy and improve buildings because all the money is going towards taxes. As well as the garbage pickup. I learned this again from my old apartment. This is the most bananas things I've ever heard in my life. So if you're building your apartment, you know, you have them, whatever. If there is six units in that building, you cannot put your garbage on the street for regular pickup. You have to, you know, either build your own bin and get a private company or whatever, or call Pharaoh and get one of those bins. You as the property owner, the property management, landlord, you have to find a way to dispose of your own trash and pay out of your pocket because you have six units. However, if you have five units or less, you can put your garbage to the street and have the regular city garbage pickup pick up your trash. Now, that's not that horrible if you think about it that way. But when it comes to paying city taxes, the city taxes are the exact same amount if you have five apartments or if you have six apartments. When you have six apartments, you have extra money that you have to pay out of pocket to dispose of your garbage, while the one that has five or less, because by the way, that's what municipal taxes are for. <gasps> oh my gosh, I know. And how do I know this? Because as a little kid, my mom used to do property assessments for taxes as a living. That was her job. So yes, the person who owns an apartment building with six units, as opposed to the one down the street, and this is a actual real event where I lived. I lived in an apartment over here, we had six units, and down the street there was the exact same, you know, unit building that had been sold to a different person, you know, over the 60 years it existed. They only had five units. So the five units put their garbage at the street, the six unit had to pay extra, but the taxes are the same, and those taxes go to pay for garbage pickup. So why are they paying for something that they can't have? Are you with me so far? Let's keep going. It ain't getting any better. The next one is a rough one because it's against our human rights. It's against everybody's human rights to have a list of bad tenants. And personally, I think bad tenants, they should have a list. When someone takes on a bad tenant, someone that's always late on rent, or you know, skips out for like two months before the eviction process all goes through and all that whatnot. It costs the landlord a lot of money because you know they lose at least a month's rent or two months' rent, then they have to pay the sheriff 300 bucks to come get them out if they don't want to leave, and you know, file all these papers and it takes them a lot of their energy because some people that own properties actually have a day job. You know, this is their second income thing, so the more they have to go through all that stuff and then have to clean because. I've personally, you know, lived in buildings where evictions have happened. They tend to sometimes leave a huge mess. Then they have to clean that mess up. And then that takes money and time again. So if you could eliminate those possibilities, that would make things a lot easier. And again, we don't know who the bad tenants are really. And we have, I guess, no right to put them on a list. So all the tenants, we all get crumpled, you know, everybody that's in apartments, I'm going to include myself. We all get crumpled into the same thing where a few bad apples have ruined it for everyone. Bad tenants, plural, you know, if there was a list, that list would not be that long. It, it, it really wouldn't. Most people are good people that try their best. And this is where the next part comes into play about why it's so difficult to get an apartment. And that goes to the fact that all or most of the buildings, and if you look at them, some of them were built back in like the 1970s or, or early 80s, and not much on the building has changed. They haven't had much renovations, but they have this nice big sign in the front, kill them properties or, or whatever the case may be, right? And they're owned by these huge corporations, and these huge corporations manage everything. So their rent per month is, is in an affordable-ish place. Okay, we'll, we'll put that in there. So, yes, they are hard to get, even though that the amount of rent is something you can afford. And I find that unfair. And some of it is actually on the line of being quite not necessarily legal. Let's talk about this for a minute, okay? 
I think you're all going to understand as soon as I say it. One, they all require credit checks. Credit checks has nothing to do with you being a good tenant or not. Bad credit can happen to anybody for many number of reasons. Mostly when you look at New Brunswick's economy. Because the real, real problem isn't affordable housing. It's the lack of an economy and a lack of a job. Because again, did the research. So in all of New Brunswick, um, we're actually the cheapest place to rent or own anything. The problem really comes down to the economy, which is the types of jobs available, call centers, versus the education level of people in the city, versus the skill set of the people who live in this city. So if you look at the last two, people's education level, so did you go to college, do you have a degree, did you go to university and get a degree? Is there work in those fields in this city? Usually not. And then it goes to the skill level, the trade. We have no tradespeople. Like, they're all retiring and there's nobody jumping on the bandwagon. There's nobody learning the trades again because everybody from my generation, and it, we were all taught in school, like, go to university, get a degree. That's where you get the jobs. Guess what? I went to college and I got a degree in something very specific and very cool. And there are no jobs around here for it. If I want to make money and the other 12 people that, you know, ended up finishing out of 64 and my class, if we want any kind of job as an electrical engineer tech, we have to go to Ontario or Alberta to get jobs. Around here, there are no jobs. If you want to make money, this isn't the place to do it because the jobs just aren't here. The only jobs that are pretty much available in Moncton is either working in some kind of hotel as cleaning or in the kitchen or, you know, some kind of, you know, hotel, restaurant management, something, or working in a call center. Those are pretty much your only two choices. And call centers are still not that easy because most of them require credit checks and all that kind of whatnot too. Again, a credit check does not determine if a person is a good person or, or whatever. Bad things happen. Sometimes you lose your job and it's not your fault because it closed down because the government grant money ran out and you no longer have a job or, or whatever. Call centers are not for everybody. Again, it still comes down to when you want to apply to these apartment, you know, buildings owned by these huge companies, nobody fits the criteria. Because the biggest one that I find a slap in the face is when they say, no pets. What? Your building is like 40 years old and half falling apart already. I understand the brand new buildings that have like, you know, all the newest amenities. They just put brand new stuff in. You know, they put a lot of money. The rent's high. I can understand their side point of view about like no pets. But all these other buildings, like I said, the buildings are like 30, 40 years old. Barely any renovations done to them. But you can't bring your pet. You're not just going to like give up your pet because you need a place to live. Your pet is a member of your family. It's just like you can't look at little Timmy and be like, look, Tim, we want to live in this apartment, so you're going to have to go live with Aunt Martha for a while because we can't bring you with us. Now, you don't say that to your child the same way that you don't say that to your dog or your cat or whatever pet you happen to have. Your pets are part of your family. So when they first have this thing that says no pets, you're like, where am I going to go? And I think that's absolutely bananas. Mostly that you can just have a pet deposit. Pay a little bit extra on your deposit, because that's a thing, because some places have a pet deposit. Pay a little bit extra on your damage deposit to cover the fact that if they need to shampoo the carpet, which most of them actually don't between tenants, by the way. They charge you for it, though, but they don't do it. Anyway, you can put that pet deposit, you know, if they need to clean the carpets, or if your puppy, you know, chewed a little bit of the corner of a door, or, you know, they fix that up. They don't even fix that. But now there's no pets allowed because the brand new company can't, can't, no. You can't run an apartment building, you know, like you run them in Toronto because this is Moncton. That's a whole different demographic. But they still run them like that same demographic. And that's where the biggest problem happens is that 
the rent is at an amount that you could kind of swing. But for maybe a reason or another, your credit isn't that good, all right? Stuff happened that did make you a bad person. You know, just life happened. And you were late on a couple things because you had to feed your children. Or, you know, your pet needed surgery. And again, pets are part of the family, all right? We're not going to kick them out because we need a place to live. They come with them. So, unfortunately, there's some people out there that have no place to live because they don't want to give up their dogs. And that is the saddest thing. But I can't do anything about it other than educate people and get you guys mad enough to go to your MLAs and say, look, let's change the law. Let's put this in the law that they can't do this because... So, let's look into those places. The first place we're going to talk about is um, Metcalf. Now, Metcalf is no longer in the city of Moncton anymore, which is good. All their properties got bought out. But I used to live in a Metcalf. And I did everything that I was supposed to do as per the rentalsman's rules. I mean, one, I was living with mice. I had mice in my apartment for like three months. They had like 27 traps in a tiny little two-bedroom apartment. They caught one one day under the fridge. It was alive for the whole day until someone came and got it. it was, I still had PTSD from that. They were in my fucking bed. They were in my bed. That was disgusting. The thing is, is that I've recently read an article about Metcat, which I'll link below, that they are the worst company to deal with when it comes to evictions and all that kind of whatnot. And I agree because I still have all the pictures of all the mice stuff in that apartment that was gross. And I was ready to go to court to fight it. I never got the chance to go to court. My file went straight to collections. Never got a chance to fight it. And now that's all my credit. So again, for somebody out there that doesn't have very good credit, it might not be your fault. I had no choice but to leave. It's either live with mice or have bad credit. Live with mice, have bad credit. Trust me, you'll take the bad credit because you don't want to live with mice. Not after they're in your bed and they're in your food and they're on your stove. On to other property management companies that there are in this city. Killam Properties, which I've talked about. That one seems to be pretty much everywhere. Um, again, they have renovated somewhat. Again, they renovate what they have to. Um, the upkeep, however, is very good. Every Killam property that I've ever been into, they're very clean. You know, the carpet in the hallway is sometimes or, or whatever. It's pretty worn. It should be changed. However, it is clean from everything I've ever seen. I always see that their parking lots are pretty well taken care of in the winter and, and all that kind of whatnot. Um, but what it hurts, they're playing a couple flowers in front of like the buildings. Like that makes, that affects people with mental health, by the way. If you're proud and happy of where you live, you go home to a beautiful home, it makes you feel better. If you had a bad day at work and you go home to a beautiful place, it kind of helps you get over the bad day that you had. So planting a few flowers in front of the building ain't going to hurt nobody. I mean, it would be pretty nice. It would beautify the city for one thing, and it would just make people happier. If you have happier tenants, you get less people yelling at you and pitching, and maybe they'll pay the rent when their little tiny things are happening, and they won't be so mad because they'll be happy because they'll have time to stop and smell the roses. And then there's this other one. Now this one I do have a little bit of experience because I have a very good friend of mine in college who lived in these ones. So there are the ATMJ properties. And if you've never heard of them, they're the ones that have most of the new buildings over in the Elmwood section, you know, Elmwood and McLaughlin area, those huge buildings. And by the way, just a side note, if in case you didn't know, in the city of Moncton, the bylaw goes that if your building is anything more than four stories high, so five. If you have five stories or more, you have to have an elevator. If you have four stories or less, you don't have to, which is why most buildings and most apartments in Moncton are four stories. Because if they put five, that's put an elevator in there and they put an elevator, then it's like super high rent. So that's why there's a lot of stairs that people have to climb a lot. And that's another thing. Some people don't have the mobility to be able to go up that many stairs. I mean, I don't anymore. Oh, I fell down these a couple times, you know, going blind. I can't see stairs, but not about me, not about me. But the ATMJ properties, they have all those complex and um, they are built from what I heard from my friends who live there. They're built, you know, to, to code, to standard, but they're not very soundproof. And I think a few people might understand what I'm talking about. I've had some people, you know, I worked in call centers. We talked. 
we had nothing to do sometimes. Sometimes there was nothing in between calls. Sometimes we needed to talk to each other because the day was just so crazy. But I've had a friend of mine, you know, that just moved into like a brand new apartment. They were paying like over like a thousand dollars a month rent, brand new thing. And he was like, yeah, we woke up this morning, you know, there was no, no sound in the apartment. You know, my girlfriend and I were just chit chatting about the day and we could hear the guy next door peeing in his toilet. What? You're paying like a thousand dollars rent and is that not soundproof? You can hear the guy next door peeing? What? But that's how they're built. They're still up to code. It's just... The older buildings, there was a little bit more privacy, you know, they built things better back in the day. It wasn't all about profit. And speaking of profit, when you go around with the ATMJ properties, their average rent is about $900 to $980 a month. I, I've looked, I looked at all their, you know, listings and did the calculations myself. Um, that said though, those calculations were about last August of last year, so it might have changed. Probably not though, because you know, it's close to the university and people, you know, move there because it's close and it's within walking distance and a lot of them, you know, it's their first apartment, they might be new to Canada, they might be here just for school, or you know, they might be from a very small place like I am, moving to the city to go to university, so they don't realize that they're paying a lot of rent for something quite cheap, I don't know. But I do believe that it's still around the $900 a month with nothing included. So one, they're not very soundproof, and two, you have to pay for your own electricity. Heating, again, I said, electric heat in the winter months can be very high. And if you don't have that, I mean, if you're living paycheck to paycheck, having your electric bill go from like 80 bucks a month to 220 is a huge jump that you might not be able to pay off. And that is not something that's fair to people. The next huge property management in this city is Northview Wright. They are the ones who bought most of the Metcat buildings. And you cannot make them be one and the same. I made that mistake. I thought that they were the same. They're not. I only learned the difference when I read that article again, the link below, about people across the country having very much difficulties with Metcap, with getting their damage deposits back, with, you know, all that kind of whatnot. So, North you right. Sorry if I gave you guys a bad name because I said to them the mice one day. It doesn't change the fact that that building probably still has mice living in their walls. But, you know, because that's where they were, by the way. They lived in the walls. Mm, not cool. But they're a whole a different management company. They have a whole different way of doing things. It's all the same staff, because the people that work there, I, I know a few of them through friends of a friend. Not Anyway. But they're still the same staff. They just got bought out by a bigger company. With Northview Wright, I did do my research. And I have a lot. With Northview Wright, I did do my research again. They're the ones who bought Metcap's buildings, so I was having an issue, and to be able to tell the difference, I just really looked into Northview Wright. Let's look at the qualifications you need to meet in order to rent from their apartments. So, the rent is, you know, usually at something when you first read it at an affordable level. Across the board, because they have different you know, buildings that were built at different stages from different people, they have about, you know, one to three bedroom apartments. So they have one bedroom apartments, they have some two bedroom apartments, mostly two, and some three bedroom apartments. Every once in a while you can find a bachelor in there, but mm, that one's are slow. Those are a few and far between, but the rent with Northview Wright, again, between a one or a three bedroom, their rent is about 700 to 885 a month. And when it comes to a one bedroom apartment for 700 bucks a month, that can be a little bit expensive. Um, a three bedroom apartment at 885, if you're three friends going to college or university and you're splitting it three ways, that's not that bad. But the thing is, is that some of them have heat and lights included. So that would be great. Some of them have just heat included, like the building that I lived in had the hot water heat, so I was responsible to pay my light bill, you know, and that was about 50 bucks a month, which is pretty much the average on assuming if you just leave TV on and don't have anything really bad, like, you know, a server running or an air conditioner running or anything like that, you'd probably be around 50 bucks a month. So if the heat's included, it's not that bad. But again, with Northview Wright, they have different buildings. So some have heat and lights included. Some of them only have heat included, pay your own lights, and some of them have nothing at all included. 
and it depends. But what they ask for is your leases. You have to have a yearly lease with these people. And for some people, that's not necessarily something that you're willing to go into. Again, the job issue here isn't all that stable. We don't know. I mean, things kind of get yanked off to the side. You just don't know. And a yearly lease is kind of a long commitment. And for some, it's just not something. They do credit checks. Again, a credit check does not let anybody know if you're a good, decent human being or not. It just says, oh, life happened. And for a reason or not, they missed some payments if they have bad credit or they've never missed a payment once. You can be someone that has never missed a payment once and not be a good tenant because sometimes drug dealers pay all their bills on time. I'm not saying that everybody that has great credit are drug dealers. I'm just simply saying as an example that having great credit doesn't necessarily mean that you're a good human being and a good person because again, you could be doing illegal things in order to pay your bills every month on time. So your credit score would be great, but as a human, you're not ethically there. They also require you to have tenants insurance. Ah, not everybody. Again, I have a video. I will try to link it again up here because I know there's a way to do it or there or somewhere. If not, again, it will be in the description. I've recently made a video where you can get tenants insurance for about $16 or less a month because uh, that's affordable. But I do understand that some people get quoted like 40, 50 and that's not in your budget. And I get how it's not. So I'm not going to ramble on about too much. If you want to know more about, you know, affordable renters insurance and what it can cover you for or how it can help you, go watch that video. That's, you know, from another time. But this place does require you to have tenants insurance in your lease. It's If you don't have it, then you can get kicked out and owe all the money and have bad credit even more. So, kind of sucks. They ask for pay stubs. Again, they cannot ask for pay stubs. It's against your human rights. They can ask for a letter from your employer to explain that you worked at your job for so many years or you just started or whatnot. And they can say that, you know, you're scheduled for 36.5 hours a week and that you're either salaried or that you make whatever amount, you know, per hour or whatnot. So that's all they need to give out there. They're not allowed to ask for your pay stubs. And I know a lot of places other than this place do as well. It's a human rights thing. So. We can't have a list of bad tenants to help weed out the bad tenants because it's against our human rights, but they can infringe on our human rights. No, we need to stand up. Again, if I'm the only person that stands up, I can't get very far. But if all of you call your MLAs and be like, hey, look, you know, we need places to live and they're not following the law, look into it. The more voices out there, the more we get somewhere. You don't need to sign petitions and whatnot. Don't, don't get things... You don't need to sign petitions or anything anymore. That's not how things get done anymore. Just call your MLA and have more than one. If there's like 10 people that call a week complaining about a certain thing that needs to be changed because it's, you know, making life rough, they're, that's their job. They're supposed to represent you. You know, you voted for them or not, but whatever. They're supposed to represent you and they're supposed to bring that to the government and say, hey, look, people are suffering because we need to change this law or this rule. If enough people call day after day, they're going to get annoyed of answering those phone calls and eventually they'll bring it up to people. So that's pretty much how you get government to do anything. Annoy the heck out of them about it because then they'll get tired of hearing about it and then they'll eventually do something. It's how the world works, I know. And I happen to be really annoying, so sometimes things get done. Oh well. Other things that North Your Right requires for you to have when you want to apply to be a tenant of their building is references. Um... That, I completely agree with. We should have references. Don't do a credit check. Again, a credit check doesn't tell you if you're a good person or a bad person. But having references from previous places you live at. Because that would maybe eliminate the use of having a bad tenants list. Because if you're a bad tenant, you're not going to have any previous landlords give you a very good reference. And that would be good. You can't get a good reference. That I agree with. Um... However, for the people that are starting out, like university or college students, they've never lived anywhere else but their mama's house. And who do they get for a reference? So the reference needs to be changed a little bit, maybe not necessarily as landlord references, but they can have things that are called character references, which means it's somebody that is not a family member, but someone that has known you for a very long time, that is saying, yes, I know this person, they are a good person, they work hard, they'll pay their bills on time, blah, blah, blah. That'd be kind of cool. 
And another thing that I see a lot, not just with North View Right, but over there, must be employed. What? That That's still discrimination. You can't do that. You can't not... I mean, you can, in the back of your mind, not give someone, you know, an apartment because they're not employed. But you can't tell them that to their face. That, again, is against your human rights. Maybe you're, like, on EI for whatever reason. Maybe you're on sick leave. Maybe you have a burnout and you just need to have something else. Because you're on EI, you need to get a place that's cheaper, but you're not employed, so they won't give you the apartment, but you have the eye, you're a good person, you can pay the bills because it's within your budget. Like, that makes no sense. Sh needs to be employed? Again, human rights infringement. They can't say that. Again, they can keep it in the back of their minds and not tell you that's the reason why. But they can't actually go and say that to your face. But they do. So I'm here to tell you that they can't do that. So, to wrap this all up, because I've given a lot of info out there, you know, you can go back and forth if you want to try to find different things. Um, I'm going to give you like a summation of what I just said. So, technically, in the books, on records, Moncton has the second least expensive rent in North America. But they did not look at the cost of utilities, they only looked at the cost of one bedroom situated in the downtown center. And they compared that to huge cities like Toronto, Montreal, Denver, Texas, um, Los Angeles. No, they're all part of those 154 cities. So we don't have the same demographic. So it's kind of unfair to put us in that same bubble as them because we don't have that kind of stuff. I mean, we well, ain't no Hollywood. We don't make millions of dollars around here. But again, the problem still falls to the economy being the problem, not the people. The average rent is might be the second lowest across North America, but the wages aren't here to pay for them. Again, it's the type of jobs that are available to the people in Moncton, and the education level that people have here in Moncton, and the skill set that people have here in Moncton. We don't have even the jobs available for people to have million dollar condos, because downtown Toronto, they have million dollar condos per month, or year, or something. I don't know. It's in the numbers that has way too many zeros that I can ever afford. So. And most of us here couldn't afford either. So the whole thing across the country is unfair. And when the government looks at things, they look at those things. So they think there is no problem. Let's let them know. Call our MLAs and let them know there is a problem. We need to get started at the level of government. And government also as in municipal government. And again, yes, the municipal government as in the city of Moncton or the city of Dieppe or Riverview, they can help a little bit with the problem if they would want to they don't want to obviously but they could um when it comes down to taxes and stuff because if the property is not owned by a huge corporation which we just talked about that has these crazy requirements for you to get into the apartment which most of us don't qualify for for reasons that we didn't do on purpose for and again the pet is part of the family the pet comes along you just don't ship them off because no no we don't do that if they're not a huge huge company they're a smaller, you know, mom and pop kind of thing maybe, or someone that's trying to make money on the side. And if they have more than one unit, or they don't purposely live in that unit, they get taxed twice. They pay double the taxes if they don't actually live in it. Um, the city could, and that's a city thing, by the way. This is city taxes I'm talking about. So they, they could take away that if they wanted to be nice. Please be nice, Mrs. Mayor. I mean, we met a few times. You, you, you know who I am. Um, so yeah, we need to talk with government levels. It's property taxes, that's provincial, but then there's city taxes, and like I said, smaller ones that aren't owned by huge companies, they're the ones that have the potential to rent to people that, you know, don't have the credit checks, that might have a dog, that, you know, whatever. But they have to put the rent higher because one, we don't have a list of bad tenants, so they don't know if you're a good tenant or not, and they don't want to be a jerk and ask you, you know, for credit checks or kind of stuff like that. So that costs them more money when they have to evict people and all that and whatnot, because they had a bad tenant. Again, a few bad apples have ruined it for everybody. They get taxed double, like I just said, if they don't actually live in that. 
And there's the whole thing like the garbage pickup. If they have, you know, more than five units, so six or more, they actually have to pay a private company to take away their trash, even though they're still paying for trash pickup in their taxes because their taxes ain't going any lower. So in all, the government can help a little bit. And if we want a few of those changes to happen, like, you know, the human rights thing, put that under the law, get them to stop, you know, asking such crazy requirements for 40 year old buildings. We have to talk to the government, call them, call them, bug them, bug them, bug them. Yes. You guys think I'm annoying? Yeah. But guess what? I get things done because I'm annoying. So keep being annoying. Call them, bring it up, talk about it. The more that they don't want to hear about it, the more they're eventually going to do something about it. And that's what I have to say about this one. Again, I've been sitting on this information for a long time, didn't quite know when to bring it out, and it turns out there is no good time to talk about something like this because the problem is not getting better. It's getting worse. But I need to have the energy to like sit here and do this because this is pretty taxing to do. But it's worth it. I have the information to get out to you. So with this stuff, you know, I had the research. I had it done for a while. And all the links of the things that I've said, they will be all linked below. And with that, I wish you a very good rest of the day, rest of the week. Again, if you want to subscribe, go ahead. If you don't, don't. want to like my page, whatever. Just look around, do whatever you want. Doesn't matter to me at all. If you want to share this information, if you have any questions about anything I just said, because there's a lot of stuff in there, just message and I'll answer back. You know, again, the information is in the links below, but sometimes they're hard to find, so I can point you exactly to where I found certain things. That is not a problem. And other than that, again, thanks very much for coming back and uh, have a great rest of the year.